Well, you better go in now, Joanne. Go to sleep. You mean go to bed? All right, go to bed. You'll call me tomorrow, won't you? After you talk to Charlie? If I talk to Charlie. Yeah, I'll put, uh, put it in my tab, huh? OK. So anyway, Dom, I... Uh... I haven't talked to Louis to Lou yet, see? Because I don't want him to think I'm eager, you know? I don't, I don't want him to think he can get me for peanuts, you know what I mean? About three ought to do it, Charlie. Oh, yeah? Well, listen, I want to tell you, if he wants me to help out on, on the restaurant, fine. But I, he's got to pay me at least two bills, right? Huh? In six months, I'll have enough money for a down payment to the house. You know, I got the house all picked out, too. And it's not in this crummy neighborhood. It's out in the country. It's at, it's at uh, what's the name of it? The farm, fa farm ridge. Edgewood, that's it. Who invited you here, huh? Huh? Tom, you invite him? Uh-uh. What about you, George? You invite him? No? Nobody invited you. You keep hanging around, and you keep telling us what a great man you are. Well, let me tell you something, great man. You're nothing. You hear that? You're nothing except a pest. All in our Benny. And I'll tell you something else. Lou Franklin wouldn't hire you as a dishwasher. Your own wife can't get you a job with him. Listen, that's not quite true. Lou Franklin has great respect for me. <laughs> Respect. Sure. You got a wife, she works to support you. You got a kid, he's gonna be a junkie. All right, now you shut up! Go ahead. Make me. Come on. What are you waiting for? What's keeping?
doing up? Why? Well, just got home a little while ago. Some of the guys were over at Marty's. Huh. This time of night? Tomorrow's Saturday. I can sleep late. Frankie, a 15-year-old boy just doesn't stay out after 1 o'clock at night. We were just listening to records. Marty got some new ones, that's all. I had one beer, I swear it. Just one beer. I thought I... <sighs> What'd your father have to say about it? Son, if you want to be a big man like our father, Charlie Kling... Stop got... it! Frankie? Don't make fun of him. Whatever you do, don't ever make fun of him. I'm sorry. He didn't say anything. He's not home yet. He's not home? Where is he? Where is he all the time? Don't worry, he'll be home. How did it go tonight? Oh, well, all right. My fingers are just uh, tired from uh, punching a cash register. Did uh, Lou drive you home? Well, that's one of the fringe benefits. I mean, either my boss buys me a car or he uh, drives me home after we close up. Yeah, but the restaurant closes at 12. I mean, uh, doesn't Lou close it at 12? Mom. You and Lou something going on between us? Well... Frankie, I, um... I want to talk to you. Go on, sit over there. You, um... You like Lou, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think he's a good guy. Well, your father's a good man, too. Well, he's made things pretty lousy for you. He never meant to. You see, he tried to. He tried. We're gonna break up, Frankie. I'm gonna ask him for a divorce. <laughs> your father yet. I'm gonna tell him tomorrow. I might even tell him tonight if he's not too drunk. As soon as possible, I'm going to marry Lou. Frankie, this is our last chance. Lou likes you very much. And he's got a, a real nice house. And we'll, well, we'll be able to get out of this neighborhood. And uh, you can go to better schools and maybe meet some new friends that don't. I think that's great, Mom. I mean it. I really do. <sighs> Hello, Charlie. Charlie, where are you? What? So you saw these policemen and being scared that they might pick you up as a drunk. You just walked into that building, huh? And you didn't know that Vic Sutro just happened to live in that particular building, huh? It's like I told you, Vic Sutro. I don't even know Vic Sutro. Ever hear of him? No. Well, yeah. 
Make up your mind, Mr. Kling. Well, I knew that he was pushing narcotics. Everybody in our neighborhood knew that. And why did you say no? I, 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 you got me all mixed up. Look, there was a knife. There was a knife on the floor. Wasn't there fingerprints on a knife? The knife was wiped clean. I thought you knew that. No. Why don't you close the door? I don't know. You said you entered that apartment after the man with the glasses came out. Why did you close the door behind you? I don't know. Mr. Kling, the people who found you said they had to open that door to get into the apartment. You must have closed it. Well, I, I, I guess so. I just don't remember. Funny. Most people, they walk into a strange apartment, they find a body lying on the floor, they don't close the door. They yell for help and they run out. Well, I was just, I was just gonna go for help. And I was going to the door and they opened it up and they came in. Charlie. Honey. Uh, Mrs. Kling. Look, may I... Mrs. Kling, I'm Lieutenant Thaler. You'll have a chance to talk to your husband in just a few minutes. Is, uh, is this your son? Oh, yes. Look, would you tell me what's happening? I, I don't know what's going on. Well, it appears we're going to book your husband on suspicion of murder. You what? Charlie. Oh. Oh, Charlie couldn't... The victim was stabbed to death in his apartment about, uh, about an hour and a half ago. Your husband was found alone with the body, and the neighbors say they overheard a quarrel a moment or so before that. Oh, but... Oh, but Charlie just The could... victim was a man named Sutro. Oh. My God. Why he talked about it. He said that Sutro should be dead. Lieutenant... Oh, Charlie talks. I mean, Charlie talks an awful lot, but he never does anything. Uh, Mr. Sutro wasn't the most likable man alive, was he, Mrs. Kling? Well, he, he gave my son some, some marijuana cigarettes. He was trying to... Oh, you know. Oh, I guess my husband told you about it. He... He did tell you. Well, I'm sure he would have, eventually. Did you find out anything? Yeah. Did you talk uh, to the Yeah, man? yeah, yeah. I called my lawyer. I told him exactly what you told me. He said he thinks there's a pretty good chance of getting it cut down to manslaughter, and he's pretty sure we can get him out on bail. Oh, really? Yeah. How much is that going to be? I don't know. Don't worry about it. I got a friend who's a bail bondsman. He'll take care of the whole thing. So you got any more of this coffee? So I can open my eyes and see you? I don't think I've been up at 5 o'clock in the morning since I was in the Boy Scouts. There's some on the stove. I just made it. Hey, where's, uh, where's Frankie? He's sleeping. What happens after this, I mean? Well, what happens is that there's a trial in a month or maybe two. Unless, of course, in the meantime, we can find the guy who really did it. Oh, he did it, Lou. Did he admit that to you? When I talked to him, he said he didn't do it, but he did. I know he did. It's my fault. I mean, it it's partly my fault. When he said something about going after Sutro, I laughed at him. I... I ridiculed him. Honey, everybody ridicules Charlie. With a national pastime around here. That's just it. I mean, you reach a certain point, and you just... You what? You snap? And he had to prove himself to you. He had to prove he was a big man. You think that's that what you figure? Well, maybe not to me. Maybe to himself. All right, that's that's your theory. Now let me tell you mine. Charlie didn't have to go after Sutro to prove he was a man. All he had to do was talk about it. Honey, that's that's all he had to do was talk, just words. I don't know. I just don't know anything oh, come anymore. On, come on. Take it easy. We're going to get him out in a few days. Until then, don't torture yourself. Honey, listen to me. 
Charlie couldn't kill a man. There's nothing in the world could make him do that. Why? Because he says he's not guilty? Uh, you'll excuse me, Lou, but the day I get a suspect in here who admits he's guilty of even reading dirty books, that's the day I retire. I will have seen and heard everything. All right, you don't believe him. Maybe if I were in your position, I wouldn't believe him either. But let's just say that you do believe him. Now, just, just humor me on this, will you? You want to be a detective? Yes, I might. You too. Hmm? Well, let's start at the beginning. Kling gave us a description that fits an awful lot of people. Obviously, we're not going to find each and every one of them and work on a process of elimination, all right? That I figured out myself. Uh, this is the basic course, so uh, you just bear with me, OK? So now we go into an area of motive. Who would be likely to kill a dope pusher? Someone else in the same business? No, not in this case, Lou. This was done by an amateur using the victim's own knife. A junkie? Wanting a fix? You know, junk's pretty cheap, especially the kind Sutro handled. Besides, if you pointed a knife at his belly, I think he would have been the type to extend credit. Lou, we've got the man we want. All right, Mel, thanks for your time. Hello. If you plan to pursue this, remember you're not a licensed private detective. I'll remember. Also consider the fact you're out of your mind. Come on down to the restaurant some night. You'll lend the place class. Can't afford your prices, and I have too much integrity to be a freeloader. I'll see you, Sherlock. Joey Lombardo, you know, the guy his brother's a cop. He says he won't get more than five to ten. Yeah? Ain't too bad, you know? Too bad? Well, it's a breeze. Well, I mean, the guy gets out maybe three years with good behavior, you know? <laughs> I had a cousin. He was in for eight years. He came out just about the same. Maybe a little healthier. You know what my old lady says? She says instead of sending him away, they ought to give him a medal. <laughs> she had a big argument with my old man. She told him he ought to be more like Kling. She says at least he made a sacrifice for his son. What do you do for your son? You teach him how to drink beer. <laughs> Clay, you are terrific. Hey, Charlie, we heard you got bailed out. Listen, I want you to know everybody on the block is with you 100%. Oh, I, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. It wasn't oh, you me. don't have to be bothered. Charlie, you got a lot of friends in the neighborhood. Yes, Believe me. I'm on. proud to be your neighbor. Yeah. Hey, Charlie. Thank you so much, Charlie. Charlie, Charlie, how's it feel to be a celebrity, hey? Shirley's, huh? Uh-huh. Well, where'd you know Shirley from? Oh, uh, just around. Look, uh... I never met you on any social engagements with Shirley. You know, usually we make up a party. Two couples. Maybe we could get something going for next week. I mean, if Shirley wouldn't be offended. Well, uh... I'll get you a drink. What would you like? Oh, nothing. Thanks. Oh, no charge. I just want to talk to you. Why? I'm not the police. I just want to talk to you. Oh. What are those? I thought it might be easier to talk here rather than down in the street. I tell you what, I'm looking for a man. He's about, oh, 27, 28 years old. He wears horn rimmed glasses, about five foot ten. He's got light hair. Now, I don't think he's a junkie, but he may be married to one, or he might possibly have a close friend who is one. So why ask me? You're a user. On top of that, you have certain, uh, shall we say, contacts here in the neighborhood? Not as many as you might think. What are you looking for this certain man for? Is 
a business acquaintance. Haven't seen him for a long time. Mm. Well, I think if he were that, you would probably have a better description of him. Maybe even his name? Huh, mister? Mm. Look, you can pay me for my time, but please don't give me anything for information. Honest, I don't know anybody like that. The only person I know with that description is my brother-in-law, and he lives in Salt Lake City. Hey, how about another game, Charlie? I'd sure like to, Benny, but I think I better be getting on home. I, I promised Joanne. Yeah, sure. See you next Thursday, Joe. Yeah, yeah, you bet. So long, Benny. So long. So long, Joe. Hey, hey, hey. See you. Come on, Bob. Come on, Bob. Hi, Pop. Oh, hi, Frankie. You're uh, home pretty early. Oh, well, I was, uh, I was down at the tavern with some friends. Benny Galati? You, you've heard of people talk about Benny Galati. Well, I, uh, I didn't get much sleep lately, so, you know, that bed was pretty hard. Well, is there something I can get for you? Like what? Well, I mean, to help you get to sleep. You know, a glass of milk or something. Oh. Oh, no, no, thanks, Frankie. That's okay. Trying to catch up on my homework. Oh, yeah. How's school going these days? Okay, I guess. That's good. Of course, it's been pretty hard to concentrate on school. Well, it'll be over soon. Yeah, once the trial's over, we'll be back to normal. Hey, maybe there won't even be a trial. There won't be any trial, really? All right. Lou, he's going to find the guy that did it. He's a fine man, Lou. I guess he's just about my best friend. I got real faith in him. He'll find the guy that killed Sutro, you bet. Pop, I... Yeah? Pop, I've been thanking you a lot lately. Of course, how could a guy keep from thinking, you know? Well, what I mean is, a son should appreciate his father, you know? I guess I just haven't shown my appreciation enough. Not just for what you did. I, I don't mean just this. I mean for all the time. I guess I just didn't wake up to it till now. You think I killed him, huh? Thank you. It's all right, boy. It's all right. You know, it's the first time I ever held you. I mean, since you was a baby. Hey, can you imagine that? You're a good boy. And I'm gonna be a better father now that we kind of know each other better. I'm sorry. Sorry? For telling your old man that you liked him? You see some good come out of it after all, huh? What is it they say? Uh, an ill wind, uh... How does that go? <laughs> you know, I wish I could help you, Pally. Really, I do, but... Whoever it was that killed Sutro, I got no uh, brief for him. I hope he gets what he deserves. I'm glad you feel that way. Yeah, you know, I was getting my stuff from him. <laughs> he got hit. I had to find somebody else. And let me tell you, that ain't easy with the heat the way it is now. Yeah, well, I'm sorry you were inconvenienced. Yeah, 
That's the reason I, if I knew anything at all, I'd tell you. Okay. Thanks anyway. No sweat. Fifteen years, he doesn't take his kid to a ball game, then he's got to take him when the Mets are in town. Couldn't he at least wait for the Dodgers? Well, I guess that's the story of his life. Just a little while ago, he was treating his father like, uh, like he was nothing. Well, that's what he was. He hadn't been accused of killing anybody. Lou. Oh, honey, honey, look, I... I haven't got anything against Frankie. I don't mean to be hard on him. Just the opposite. He thinks his father took his life in his hands to save him. Naturally, he's grateful. He feels guilty. Sure, it's natural, it's right. But what about all these other people around here? What excuse have they got? Two weeks ago, there isn't one of them would have given Charlie the right time. He was just a weak little guy who wouldn't step on a bug. Now, how can you respect a man like that? Oh, but a man who kills, a man who'll stick a knife in somebody's gut, him you can respect. Well, Charlie's a big hero now, just like he wanted to be. You still think he's innocent? Honey, I know he's innocent. Even if I'm not any closer to finding out who did do it. Lou, you're not going to find anyone else who killed Sutro. Well, the way things are going, I'm, I'm afraid I won't. And sometimes I'm afraid I will. so hot I couldn't sleep. I thought I'd come down and meet you. Maybe you'd like to take a walk or something. Well, what about your father? Oh, he's sleeping. All right. How was the ball game? Okay, we won four to two. Flores got a homer with two on. Did you have a good time? Yeah, yeah, while it was on. Sort of got lost in it, you know? As soon as it was over, I got to thinking again. Mom, did you ever tell Pop what you told me? I mean, about breaking up and the divorce? No. Aren't you going to? Well, he's got enough worries on his mind right now. Yeah, but you're gonna have to tell him sometime. Yeah. I'm gonna have to tell him sometime. Like when he's in prison? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean that to sound so rotten. Frankie, when I first thought about this, I, I spent a lot of nights staying up, wondering if it was right. I mean, to just up and leave a man that you've lived with for 16 years, it's, that's not something you decide in a minute. I wondered what was going to happen to him. He doesn't have a steady job. He needs somebody. <sighs> Where does he go? Who takes care of him? But with all that, I decided that it was right that I should leave. 
I told you how I feel. I'm entitled to a life. And so are you, Frankie, you most of all. If what your father did that he has to go to prison for it, well, that, that just doesn't change things. If I decided that it was right before, it's just as right now. Yeah, but what he did, he did for us, didn't he? I mean, so we'll go to prison. He won't be there all his life. Maybe, maybe when he comes out, things will be better for everybody. Don't you think it can be that way? Do you? Like, man, don't bug me, huh? Look, I don't care you're the fuzz, you're not the fuzz. And I'm sure you're nice to your fellow man. But uh, even if I knew anything, the answer is negative. Dig. Lou, I just can't believe it. I wasn't going to tell you now. But it'd be hard if I waited for both of us. I just didn't think Lou could do a thing like that. Charlie, don't blame Lou. I started it. I've been trying to find a way out for a long time. He just happened to be it. What if he hadn't been around? I'd stay then. I'd stay, and we'd just go on destroying each other. Destroying each other? Charlie, you know it. I just see my life slipping away. Nothing to show for it, no hope. So I'd blame it on you. And I'd nag you and insult you, and, and you'd go out and get drunk, go into your dream world so you could forget what a what a a shrew I was, and then I would become more of a shrew because you'd be drunk all the time, and then we'd just bury each other, deeper and deeper. Honey, I have not had a drink in three weeks. Charlie, it's all over. I wish it wasn't. I really wish it wasn't, but it is. Well, what about Frankie? I mean, how does he feel about all this? Did you tell him? Look, it's more for him than it is for me. Honey, he can get out. He can get out of here. Do you realize that you had to kill a man to protect him? I want him to live in a place where that doesn't have to happen. Kill a man, huh? Look, I don't condemn what you did. It was a terrible thing. And in a way, I was almost proud of you. <laughs> now, to be hit with something like this now. Charlie, I'm sorry. Yes, now. After all this time, just when things were starting to look up. When things are starting to look up, Charlie, you are going to prison. Uh, I was thinking that. When I get out, you know, we could have something. A home. Well, I don't mean just a decent place to live. I mean, I mean, well, I mean that too. But, I mean, we'd have something. We'd all be together. We'd be a family. You know, Frankie and me, we, we never really understood each other. We, we were always going in opposite directions. But now I know he loves me. All of a sudden, I got a son. You've always had a son, Charlie. But it's different now. I'm different. I mean it. I'm a completely different person. You remember? You remember why I used to drink all that time? You know, it wasn't because what you said you were, whatever that was. It was because I kept having these dreams. I know I was just kidding myself. They wouldn't come true. Not the kind of person I was. You think they're going to come true now? Well, sure, it's already started. Charlie, you talk. You've always talked, but you don't act. Killing Sutro, that wasn't an act. That was. You could almost call it the turning point. I'm pleading guilty, and I'm not going to mind going to prison, because what I did was wrong, and I ought to pay the penalty. I killed Vic Sutro, and I admit it. No, I, uh, I 
can't think of anybody, Lou. Sutro had maybe uh, 30, 40 customers. Most of us, you know, we move around the same crowd. I know nearly everybody. Boyfriends, girlfriends, wives, husbands. Hey, wait a minute. Um, uh, there's a guy, um, uh, Billy Pavan. He fits that description. I talked to him. He's the one told me about you. Oh. That's how you found out I was on the stuff, huh? What about Martha's boyfriend? I don't know. Who's Martha going around with now? You know, the guy we met at Chris's party. Is he an addict? I don't know, but Martha is. For more than a year. He just got back from the Navy, didn't he say? Yeah. He was in the Navy. And he fits the description. What's his name? Mm, Francis. That was his last name. Something Francis. What can I do for you, Mike? Prove it. You say I killed the pusher? Go ahead, prove it. You can't. I was hoping I wouldn't have to. <laughs> then I'd give myself up. Your conscience bothers you, Mr. Francis. Oh, not about Sutro. But about the man who's going to jail for what you did. It shows, Mr. Francis. I'm sorry about this guy, Kling, whatever his name is. I mean it, I really am. But uh, I gotta think about me. I come first. In other words, your conscience bothers you, but not enough. If I kill Sutro, my conscience would bother me, but not enough. What are you going to do now? Calling the cops, calling Kling's wife to plead with me? I won't crack. Nobody can prove a thing, and I won't crack. I got a life ahead of me, and I'm not going to spend any part of it in jail. You got a job, Mr. Francis? I don't see how that's any of your business. I know you don't. I just got out of the Navy last month. Mm-hmm. You got a trade? Two dimes to rub together? Look, Mac, I, I don't see where you get off asking me anything. It's a great way to start this life of yours. With exactly nothing. Except a conscience that's going to get worse and worse. Now you let me worry about that. Say you had a chance to kill two birds with one stone. Get a really good head start on this life of yours and ease your conscience at the same time. Say you give yourself up. Confess. No, 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 no. That, that'd go over very big, you know. This guy Sutro wasn't a very lovable character. On top of that, you'd be saving a, an innocent man from prison. Put it all together. What have you got? Too long, whatever it is. Maybe not. Not if you were to be paid, say, uh, $2,500 a year for every year you spend in jail. That'd really add up, wouldn't it? With compound interest, you'd have a nice little pile of money when you got out. You'd have time to learn a trade, start your own business, get married, maybe. Yeah, a guy could do a lot if he had a nice bank account. A toast. To the Kling family. You know, things are going to be a little rough for a while. Just like sometimes it's been pretty bad up till now. But what do they say? After the darkness comes the dawn, huh? Well, go ahead, honey. Drink up. That's a hundred proof. How about that? She takes a sip. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess mother doesn't know how to hold her milk. <laughs> well, it's sort of crazy, you know. Here in a few weeks, you'll... You'll be going to jail, and we're laughing. Frankie, what do they say? Sometimes you gotta lose one to win one, right? Hey, you know what I love with this milk? Pretzels. We got any pretzels in the house? Yes, I, I think there's some on the top shelf. You go ahead and get them. I, uh, I think I better get ready for work. Oh, can't you stay around for a while, Mom? Oh, no, no. Work comes first, especially tonight. I, uh, I think Mother's gonna talk to Lou. I'll walk you down, okay? Uh, yeah, all right. I I'll be a little while. Say, honey, before I forget it, would you please tell Lou I'm sorry I let him go on that wild goose chase? Frankie, I think that little sip of milk went to mother's head. <laughs> you get a lawyer for yourself. Any lawyer you want. Have him draw up the contract any way he wants. Ironclad, $2,500 a year, year in and year out, paid into your bank account. Now, if you don't go along with this idea, they might pick you up anyway. You realize that, don't you? I found you. They're not stupid, you know. They can find you, too. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Oh, sure, you could, uh, you could plead self-defense. It was self-defense. But maybe a jury wouldn't believe you. This way, you come in with clean hands. And a guarantee of 2500 a year. You're not putting me on. You're not kidding. I'm not kidding. I didn't start out to kill him. Here, I just get out of the Navy. Two years out of the States, I find my girl. She's hooked. Sutro hooked her. I told him I was going to blow the whistle on him. He grabbed the butcher knife, and then I grabbed it away. $2,500 a year, hmm? For services rendered. Why are you doing it? I mean, what is this guy cling to you, anyhow? Some kind of relative or what? I'm a good Samaritan. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, that didn't take you very long. Oh, hiya, Lou. Hello, Charlie. Where's everybody else? Well, Joanne went down to your restaurant just a few minutes ago, and Frankie went down with her. I think she wants to tell you something. I got some news, too, Charlie. Sit down. I got your man, Charlie. The guy who killed Sutro. A fellow named Pete Francis. It's a funny thing, I've been looking all over the neighborhood for him, and he lives not a block from here, over Markowitz Grocery. So, it looks like you're gonna be a free man, Charlie. He, uh, he admitted this to you? Well, <laughs> this guy didn't kill that pusher. I don't know why he says he did, but he didn't. I mean, I killed Sutro. I swear, I killed him. That's the truth. Look, uh, Lou, if I've misled you... Charlie. He's not gonna work. I believe him. The police will believe him. Will believe him? You mean he hasn't given himself up yet? No, not yet. But as soon as he takes care of a little piece of legal business, he'll go down to the station. I believe him on that, too. Oh, Lou, you're smart. You're really smart. You think I don't know why you're doing this? I know all about you and Joanne. And you know Joanne's gonna stay with me now, don't you? 
because she'd admired my admitting what I did. She's going to stay with me, you hear? Charlie, look. You saw what was coming. You're a very successful businessman, Lou, because you've got foresight. You saw what was coming, and you knew there was only one way to stop it. Charlie, listen to me. You had to prove me a fake. Was I asking so much? I was going to pay for what I was doing. Tell me, was I asking too much? Charlie Kling, uh, you can start unpacking now. What I'm, are you going talking to about? I'm going to jail for you. Where'd you hear about it? What do you know about it anyway? Look, where's Lou Franklin? What's no. this, a game we're playing? I'm not going to tell anybody. Nobody's going to oh, know. I'm screwy here, man. I'm going to jail for you. I got reasons. I got reasons, too. Two good reasons. You mean? You're going to give yourself up. Right. I'm giving myself up. You can't. Now take it easy, man. Now wait, you can't. Don't you can't me. take my life. Go on me. Sonny. He acted like he was out of his mind. I seen it. It wasn't your fault. Would you get an ambulance? He, he just tried to... I mean, he was like a wild man or something. I, I didn't mean this to happen. I know you didn't. You, you sure he's... Mr. Franklin, I mean, uh, now, with this, I, I can't go through with that deal. I, I plead self-defense twice, and it both was, both times. I'm sorry, uh, the police will think I'm a killer. I can't go through with your deal. You don't have to. They're sending the ambulance right away. There's no hurry. Oh? Huh? Lucy! Lucy! What are you going to tell the police about this? Well, the old man was a witness on the... I'll tell him self-defense. What reason are you going to give for him being here? I don't know. I'll think of something. Well, what about... What about you and, and him? I mean, uh, this... deal you're supposed to have is... It'll work out. I just wish it hadn't worked out like this. <laughs> 